In the previous video, we discussed behaviorism. Behaviorism is classed as a learning theory because it suggests that behaviors are learned due to stimuli response mechanisms, or put another way, we learn due to an interaction with our environment. And it's likely that the key principles made sense to you. Of course, if we experience a reward for our behavior, this is pleasurable, and we're more likely to repeat the behavior to get the reward again. And of course, the reverse is true. So a punishment is likely to stop you from repeating a behavior. But do we actually have to experience the reward and punishment ourselves to learn the lesson? This is the question social learning theorists like Albert Bandura asked. Surely seeing others being rewarded or punished for their behavior is enough to learn how to modify our own to gain rewards and avoid punishments. Social learning theory is still a learning theory of behavior, but in order to make this leap, social learning theorists had to bring back something totally rejected by behaviorists as unscientific. They had to include internal mental processes. The PsychBoost app now has three features, flashcards, multiple choice quizzes, and see if you can work out the key term from its definition with the key term tester. Try paper one for free right now. And patron supporters can watch PsychBoost videos ad free learn from over 17 hours of exclusive exam tutorial videos, and access hundreds of digital and printable resources, including mind maps, quiz sheets, worksheets, teaching slides, and more. Social learning theory, defining features. Albert Bandura is the most prominent social learning theorist and conducted one of the most famous psychology studies, the Bobo doll experiment. While social learning theorists like Bandura agreed with many of the principles of behaviorism, they also argued that to understand human behavior, we need to accept learning is a cognitive process, which takes place in a social context. We watch people around us, and they act as models for our own behavior. If we observe someone carrying out a behavior, and we see they're rewarded, then we're more likely to imitate, meaning we're more likely to repeat the behavior. Social learning theorists call this process vicarious reinforcement. There's also vicarious punishment. If we observe someone being punished for their behavior, then we're less likely to imitate that behavior. The people we observe are called models, and they can include parents, friends, and family members. These are examples of live models, people we know personally. We can also imitate symbolic models. This is when we see behavior modeled in the media like characters from movies and books. Not all models are equally likely to be imitated. We're most likely to imitate models we identify with. These are models with similar characteristics to ourselves, things like gender and age, and we're also more likely to imitate models we see as high status. The role of mediational factors. While the behaviorists argued that internal mental processes could not be studied scientifically, the social learning theorists argued that human behavior couldn't be understood without including processes that must happen in the mind. Mediational processes are what must happen between seeing a model perform a behavior and imitating that behavior. These cognitive processes are attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation. Let's consider each one in turn. Attention. In order to reproduce a behavior when that behavior was first being demonstrated, you must have watched carefully and paid full attention to what was done and how it was done. Retention. This is memory. If you paid attention but then forgot what you'd seen, then clearly you're not going to be able to reproduce the behavior. So there must be a memory of that behavior retained in the mind. Reproduction. This is what students tend to get wrong. These are all internal mental processes. So this is about thinking if I can do the same behavior. If the behavior seems too complex, or I don't have the strength or ability to perform the behavior, well, I'm not gonna try to reproduce it. Motivation. If I've paid attention, I've retained the information, and I believe I can reproduce the behavior, finally I need to consider if I actually want to reproduce the behavior. This is going to include thinking about how performing this behavior is going to affect me and if I'm going to receive any potential rewards or punishments. Mediational factors affect behavior, because if any of these four mediational processes are missing, then the behavior won't be imitated. Application questions on mediational processes are fairly common, so let's think about an example. Primary school student Katie has seen Alice push Billy over and steal his sweets. The teachers didn't see this happen, so Alice got to keep Billy's sweets. So first of all, Kate did see Alice take Billy's sweets. She's paid attention. She then retains this information. I've just seen how Alice got Billy's sweets by pushing him over. Reproduction. Kate thinks I'm bigger than Alice. I could push her over. Motivation. 
Kate likes sweets. So she goes over, pushes Alice over, and takes her sweets. She's been taught that sharing is kind, so she offers some of her new sweets to Billy, but not the good ones. For behaviourists, if the animal does not immediately perform the behaviour after the stimulus has been presented, then it's assumed that learning didn't happen. So for behaviourists, learning and performance are the same activity. However, in social learning theory, learning and performance are not the same thing. This is because if someone learns through observation, they can keep that memory until the appropriate time to use it. This could be days, months, or even years after the initial observation. So in the case of Katie, it isn't necessary for her to immediately imitate Alice. Maybe Kate's going to hold fire for a while. Maybe next week or next month. But she's learned. Social learner theorists would say the information has been internalized to use at a later time. Bandora's research. The Bobo doll study. Bandora's aim was to demonstrate social learning theory's concepts of modeling and imitation. In 1961, he decided to test if an adult modeling aggressive behavior on an inflatable toy called a Bobo doll would be imitated by young children. The participants were all children between the ages of three and six. In one group, children were taken to a room filled with toys and watched an adult play with a Bobo doll with physical and verbal aggression. In the second group, the children watched an adult play non-aggressively with other toys in the room. The experimenter watched behind a one-way mirror and recorded the physical and verbal aggression of the children. It was found that those children who had been shown an aggressive model were more likely to be aggressive themselves. Also, the results demonstrated identification, especially for boys, with the boys who observed a male model more likely to imitate aggression than the boys who had an aggressive female model. In a 1963 variation, children watched either an aggressive adult, a recording of an aggressive adult, or a cartoon of an aggressive cat. All of the models demonstrated aggressive behaviour to the Bobo doll. The results showed similar levels of aggression for all three groups, demonstrating symbolic models are imitated. In a 1965 variation, Bandora demonstrated the power of vicarious reinforcement and punishment. In this study, children observed adults being aggressive towards a Bobo doll, and then either given rewards in the form of sweets, punishment by being hit with a wooden golf club, or no reward or punishment. Bandora found that the children who had seen the adult punished were far less aggressive to the Bobo doll than their reward or the control condition. Evaluations Bandora's Bobo doll study demonstrated modelling, identification and vicarious reinforcement, so it can be used as evidence to evaluate social learning theory concepts. The Bobo doll study itself was a well-conducted lab study with high internal validity. The environment was controlled with each child experiencing the same procedure, room and toys, and the study controlled for participant variables by using a match pairs design, with the children's pre-existing aggression levels assessed before the study. This ensured each group had the same number of aggressive children. However, while the Bobo doll study was well conducted, it may lack external validity. The findings on aggression only showed the short-term effect of social learning, not if aggression would be imitated weeks or months later. Also, aggression shown to be imitated in the lab setting might not be generalizable to real-life situations, for example, aggression on TV performed in school towards the children. This means the study lacks ecological validity. The fact that social learner theorists use inferences can also be used in an evaluation. The mediating cognitive factors, the processes of identification with a model, and vicarious reinforcement can't be directly observed. They're inferred from the behavior of participants in the studies. These inferences could be mistaken, Mediating cognitive factors might not have as strong an influence as thought, or the true cause of behaviour might be very different. Ultimately, this lack of direct observation means social learning theory is not as scientific as behaviourism or biological psychology. Compared to behaviourism, social learning theory offers a more detailed understanding of human behaviour by taking into account the role of consciousness and rationality. It also provides a better explanation of complex behaviours such as aggression while behaviorism focuses on demonstrating the learning of basic behaviors through animal studies. Bandora has an interesting perspective on determinism, arguing for reciprocal determinism. This is the idea that not only is our behavior caused by the environment, the environment is determined by our behavior. For example, a child who works hard revising for a test has an effect on their environment, getting an A on the test and a teacher who gives praise. This environment then works as a motivation to work even harder, this more complex view of determinism 
might be seen as more valid than simple environmental determinism. I want to thank everyone over on Patreon for supporting the channel. Because of you, I've been able to teach part-time, meaning I can make Psych Boost on YouTube for everyone. I do have extra resources that are exclusive to my patrons, so if you decide to sign up, you can grab those over my website. And these include over 100 exam questions to our videos, of course including questions on the Approaches unit. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next Psych Boost video.